The temperature of a glass of warm water after it's put in a freezer is represented by the following table. So we have time in minutes, and then we have the corresponding temperature at different times in, in minutes. Which model for C of T, the temperature of the glass of water T minutes after it's served, best fits the data? So pause the video and see which of these models best fit the data. All right, now let's work through this. Let's work through this together. So in order for it, we see these choices. Some of these are exponential models. Some of these are linear models. In order for it to be a linear, in order for a linear model to be a good description, when you have a fixed change in time, you should have a fixed change in temperature. If you're dealing with an exponential model, then as you have a fixed change in time, you should be changing by the same factor. So the amount you change from, say, minute one to minute two, or from minute one, uh, two to minute three, it's not going to be the exact same amount, but it should be the same factor of where you started. So let's think about this. So here, our change in, our change in time is two minutes. What is the absolute change in temperature? So our absolute change in temperature is negative, what, 15.7? Negative 15.7. And what if we, if we viewed it as a multiplication? So what do we multiply 80 by to get 64.3? Well, I can get a calculator out for that. So 64.3 divided by 80 is equal to 0 0.8, I'll just say, approximately 0.8. So we could multiply by point zero point eight. This is going to be approximate. So to get from 80 to 64.3, I could either subtract by 15.7 if I'm dealing with a linear model, or I can multiply by 0 0.8. Now if I increase my time again by two, I'm going from minute two to minute four, so delta t is equal to two, the absolute change here is what? This is going to be not 12, this is going to be, my brain isn't functioning op optimally. If this was 64.7, then this would be 12, but it's four less than that, so it's 11.6, negative 11.6. But if you looked at it as multiplying it by a factor, what would you have to multiply it by approximately? Let's get the calculator back out. So if I said 52.7, divided by 64.3, divided by 64.3 is equal to uh, is about 0.82. So times 0 0.82. So just by looking at this, I could keep going, but it looks like for a given change in time, my absolute change in the number is not, going, is not even close to being the same. If this was like 15.6, I'd be like, okay, there's a little bit of error here. Data that you're collecting in the real world is never going to be perfect. These are models that try to get as close to describing the data. But over here, we keep multiplying it by a factor of roughly uh, 0.8, roughly 0.8. Now you might be tempted to immediately say, okay, well that means that C of T is going to be equal to our initial temperature, 80, times a common ratio of 0 0.8 to the number of minutes that pass by. Now this is very tempting, at, and it would be the case if this was one minute, and if this was two minutes, but our change in temperature each time is, our change in temperature each time is two minutes. So what we really should say is, this is one way to think about it, is that it takes, it takes two minutes to have a 0 0.8 change. So or to be multiplied by 0 0.8. So the real way to describe this would be t over two. Every two minutes, when t is zero, we'd be at 80. After two minutes, we would take 80 times 0 0.8, which is what we got over here. After four minutes, it would be 80 times 0 0.8 squared. In fact, let's, actually, let's just verify that we feel pretty good about this. So if we had something like this, so t and C of t, so when t is zero, C of t is 80. When t is, well let me just do the same data that we have here. When t is two, we have 80 times, two over two is one, so it's 80 times 0 0.8, which is pretty close to what we have over here. When t is four, it would be 80.0.8 squared, which is pretty close to what we have right over here. I can just calculate it for you. If I have, 0.8 squared times 
80. 51.2, getting pretty close. This is a pretty good approximation, pretty good model. So I'm liking, I'm liking this model. This isn't exactly one of the choices. So how do we manipulate this a little bit? Well, we can remind ourselves that this is the same thing as 80 times 0.8 to the 1 half, and then that to the t power. And what's 0.8 to the 1 half? So 0.8, that's the same thing as the square root of 0.8. It's roughly 0.89. So this is approximately 80 times 0.89 to the t power. And if you look at all of these choices, this one is pretty close to this. This, this model best fits the data, especially of the choices going. This is pretty close to the model that I just thought about. Now another way of doing it that might have been a little bit simpler, I like to do it this way because even if I didn't have choices, we would have gotten to something reasonable. Another way to do it is say, okay, 80 is our initial state. All of these, whether you're talking about an exponential or a linear model, start with 80 when t is equal to zero. But it's clearly not a linear model because we're not changing by even roughly the same amount every time. But it looks like every two minutes we're changing by a factor of 0.8. So we're going to have an exponential model. So you say, okay, it'd be one of these two choices. Now, this one down here you could rule out because we're not changing by a factor of 0.8 or 0.81 every minute. We're changing by a factor of 0.81 every two minutes. So you could have ruled that one out, and then you could have deduced this right over here. And you could have said, look, if I'm changing by a factor of 0.9 every minute, then that would be 0.81 every two minutes, which is pretty close to what we're seeing here, changing by a factor of about 0.8 or 0.81 every two minutes. So once again, that's why we like that first choice.